Okay, in this video here, I want to go through a, a tool path to rough the outside of the actual block here, um, the 96 by 96 block. Um, firstly, what we might do is just, you can see this is a selected tool path at the moment. And what we can do is we can basically toggle that selected tool path on or off. So just for clarity there, I'm just going to knock off the tool path. Um, I'm also going to go to view and knock off my stock shading and again I might just right click and top. So I'm looking straight down on the top and again right click and unzoom 80%. Okay so um, I need to go to my tool paths um, tab on the ribbon bar and I'm going to pick contour and the chaining dialog box opens at the moment this you can see that the solid selection is grayed out because there's actually no solids here um, in my graphics window so my only option is to select wireframe okay so with C plane selected and um, we've got a couple of options here just to show you that if I highlight this option, this just selects a single entity. And I suppose what's important with Mastercam is, is where you click on a line. So if I click over halfway down towards this half of the line, the geometry will start cutting here where the green line is and ends where the red line is. Um, and obviously with my cutter compensation, I want to be on the left hand side. That means that I'm Klein milling. Okay, so that's a single entity. I'm just going to unselect there to show you again. So I can do a complete chain. So selecting a complete chain again, selecting the line in the same position means that I'm going to start here and go all the way around that geometry. Um, obviously all lines um, have to meet. So the end points of the first line have to meet where the the start point of the second line is. So your geometry has to be accurate for it to select a full chain. Um, again, if I was to unselect that, another popular one to use is partial. So again, you click where you want to start machining and then you can click to where you want to finish machining. And then it's just going to run along the highlighted lines here. So again, I'm going to unselect. And in this case, I want to go all the way around the block. So I'm going to press a complete chain. Selecting on here, um, so I'm going to start machining on here. It is possible to expand this, so I can expand the dialog box on here and move the start point. But for the moment, um, I'm just going to leave it as is and accept that. I don't want to chain any more geometries, so I'm going to accept that. So again, I need to look at my tool, and I'm looking for a library tool. And this time I'm looking, my filter is set to look for a spot drill. Um, so I want to say none to that and just look for end mills. And I could say, well, okay, I want to look for an end mill with a diameter of equal to, um, let's just say 16, which on our has machines is tool number one here and I go green tick and OK. So inside again in this current library that I'm looking at, and you can see the library here, there's only one 16 diameter cutter. OK, so I'm going to accept that. Again, I'm going to double click on here to open that particular tool. And again, it's showing me the cutting diameter, the overall length, the cutting length is 26 millimeters. Um, I'm going to go to the next window and on our machine again this is tool number one and if I tab you'll see that that automatically sets the length offset and diameter offset to one. The cutting speed for this cutter that we have on our machine in this material is 150 and our feed per tooth is 0.1 the number of flutes that we have, this is actually a slot drill that we have up here. So I'm going to say the number of flutes is two. And you can see what that does is it automatically calculates the speeds and the feeds. And again, my plunge rate, if I was plunging in here, I'm going to put my plunge rate down at 250. And again, make sure that my spindle direction is clockwise. Um, the name, so I'm going to call it a 16 millimeter. Okay, and I'm going to go finish. The comment in this dialog box, so I'm going to, this is going to be a roughing operation, so rough outer 
profile. Cut parameters. Um, my compensation is uh, I'm going to leave set to computer. Um, and with the stock to leave on the walls, I'm going to leave 0.6 on the side walls and I'm going to leave the floors finished. So I'm going to go down to full depth. Depth cuts. I don't want to do this in a number of cuts. I just want to do this in one depth of cut. So um, what's new here in this contour toolpath is that we need a lead in and a lead out. Um, and at the moment, I'm just going to leave the default so that the length of the lead in line, so this line here is going to be 100% of the diameter of the cutter, which is 16 millimeters, and likewise the radius, and the same with the lead out. And um, what you'll notice on here is by default, enter and exit at the midpoint in closed contour. So again, I'm going to leave that uh, set as is. Breakthrough. So this is a situation where if I wanted and I was picking off a solid model, um, I could actually push the cutter so that it breaks through the actual component. Um, again, irrelevant in this situation. I don't want to do this in multiple passes. Um, that multiple passes obviously is multiple passes in the X and Y axis. Depth cuts is multiple cuts in the Z axis, if you like. Um, I'm just going to go straight to my linking parameters. And again, because all of my geometry is drawn on the Z0, the very top of the block, I'm going to set all of these to absolute. And I'm going to set my depth to minus 11. The top of stock, I could set to zero because at this stage I've face milled the top of the stock. And the feed plane here, I'm, I'm going to leave at absolute 10 and my retract plane absolute 25. And again, I'm going to green tick to select. And you can see here then, it shows us the actual tool path. So I'm just going to put that in an isometric view. So again, what I need to be conscious of here is as the same with the uh, face mill operation, I am wrapping to here and then I am feeding from 10 millimeters above the top of the job down to minus 11. So I'm actually feeding down 21. If I was to look at the front of the job, that might explain that a little bit. So again, just zoom back out here. So um, this is level zero here on Z. So I'm going down to minus 11, but I, I am wrapping into here and feeding down from here to here. Um, so again, just going to go to isometric. So if I was to back plot that and again drag it along here you can see how I am machining around the outside of the block lead in and my lead out um, because my lead in and lead out is quite large it's quite long it's a good way a good deal away from the uh, edge of the block what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to reduce this uh, feeding down. So again, if I was to just back plot it first, just to show you the time. So again, this is taking me 57.59 seconds. Okay, so uh, 58 seconds, we'll say. Okay, so I'm going to go to my parameters again. And here, I'm going to put my feed plane down to minus 10. And apply and green tick. Again, I need to regenerate the dirty operation. And now you can see that I am wrapping down to essentially minus 10, feeding down for one mil and then feeding around. And again, if I was to back plot that and look at the time, you can see there that I've, I've taken, it's down to 52 seconds, 53 seconds. So five seconds off that particular cycle time. Again, if I want to verify that, um, I'm going to select all operations and then verify. So selecting all operations prior to verify will verify the facing operation and the contour. So again, now if I was to play that, you can see my face mill operation on here and you can see that a, the cutter is well clear of the workpiece where it's leading in and leading out. Again, stop conditions. I'm going to stop on a collision. And when I have stop on collision, I can say, well, what am I checking for a collision with? Um, so I'm going to actually set 
that I'm checking for a collision with the holder and the shank of the cutter which um, and the shoulder of the cutter so I'm making sure that no elements and in this case my cutter is 26 millimeters long so there is no way I'm only going 11 millimeters deep but it would check that I'm not hitting with the shoulder of the cutter or the shank so again if I was to reset this and play if there was a collision um, Mastercam would actually stop.